unusual. We want to be a leader in apocalypse technology. What I'm seeing right now is called the pleasure capsule. Ridiculous! This is really thinking outside the box! I have no feeling below the waist. That's what I hear. And just plain stupid. And never underestimate the power of stupid. I actually <laughs> staged a fake accident with my limo. You know, we've done a lot of crazy things on this show. And it really impresses me, the things that people come up with. It's, it's so creative. We thought it'd be fun to put together the list of some of the wackier and cooler, not the most practical, cars we've seen. And some are pretty outrageous, and some are kind of stupid. So welcome to JLo's Garage Top 10 Most Outrageous Rides. Number 10, the Wraith. Now, a lot of the wildest, the most unusual cars have been created for movies or TV shows, and number 10 is no exception. He is a phantom, a wraith. And of course, the movie itself was completely outrageous. The car was actually possessed by the spirit of a dead guy, and the car is seeking revenge on his killer. Well, that seems plausible, doesn't it? It had a four-cylinder, 2.2-liter engine with twin T25 Garrett turbochargers, I believe they were. It made 440 horsepower. I, I drove it. There's no way this, <laughs> this feels more like four horsepower. But you speed up the camera, you make it look good. Well, the movie was kind of a bomb, but the star made the movie. That's what I would say. Jay, how are you? Charlie? You know, I love Charlie Sheen. He's one of my favorite guys. Even he knows how bad it was. He's got a sense of humor about it. Well, here, he'll tell you about it, and you'll see the car. Check it out. But I remember this. Dodge built a car like this, and it went like 190 miles an hour. It's going to be a pace car. Correct. Then they decided, oh, let's use it in this movie, The Wraith, and it got more famous from the movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes, it did. As I remember, you're a kid who dies, but you come back as a car. It's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me still. But it's a true story. It's obviously a true story, <laughs> yeah. Although the Wraith didn't hurt Charlie's future projects, it did kill its fair share of cars during the filming. And to be honest, since this was a concept car, well, it's kind of a code word for, it really doesn't drive very well at all. Uh, this one here is kind of on its last legs. As a movie car, it looks great. I mean, it's very aerodynamic. Sure. It's just not a really living, breathing, driving real car. And but actually, we have a car just like one used in the film, a Chrysler Laser. This is one of these cars from the early 80s. Chrysler built it as their first sports car. And Rather than drive this around, we'll take that. I'd love to. Come on. I've known Charlie for almost 40 years. And uh, if you've read a magazine in the last decade, you probably know Charlie took the good times eh, a little too far sometimes. I don't think you ever no missed a taping of the show when we had you on. <laughs> Oh, there was one time. <laughs> what's that? Oh, yeah, what was that there one? There was that one time. Um, <laughs> what happened that one time? I, when I was partying back in the day, I would always have a have a cutoff moment. Nothing happens past, you know, 3 a.m. because right. I got to do this the next day. Right, right. But I I went past that by, by 10 hours and looked up at the clock and realized that I had to leave to go do The Tonight Show with right, you right. in about an hour. Well, I should have just used some ridiculous excuse. As you said, I'd, I'd, I'd run out of wisdom teeth to, to pull. Yeah. So I actually <laughs> staged a fake accident with my limo. Oh, that's? Yes. <laughs> I do remember and, yeah. To try and fool me, the yeah. fake accident. I do remember that. I, I don't think I bought it. As not I for a second. No, no, not no. Not for a second. <laughs> 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 you know, for me, a good judge of character is how someone treats the staff, you know, waiters, waitresses, crew members, stuff like that. And Charlie's great. He gets right in there with everybody, signs autographs, takes pictures, does what he has to do. And uh, he's cleaned himself up. He looks great. He's a lot of fun. And uh, he's a friend of mine. Coming in at number nine, the Sea Breacher. This is one of the more unusual vehicles we featured on the show in that there is no wheels at all. And it's basically a watercraft, but unlike any other watercraft I'd ever been in. These custom-built watercraft are stylish and powerful, and they use a mixture of boat and aircraft technology. Now you can dive, jump, do barrel rolls, and fly across the water just like a dolphin. Ah. Boy, this thing's a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, it's like something right out of a Bond film. You know, that's one of those deals that Q would come up with, you know? How many horsepower are we talking, Rob? 
Uh, this one's got 300 horsepower, which is, is quite a few ponies. Did you design and build these? Yeah, yeah, I've been designing and building these for about the last 20 years. What's that? Uh, that's an idiot alert. That's oh. telling us that there's an idiot in the vicinity. Hey, I know that idiot. I didn't think this was your style. It's not. <laughs> so I invited my old friend Jeff Dunham. You know, we have this kind of water challenge thing going. We've done a few of these on water. So far, Jeff is winning. No, but if you talk to former astronauts, the majority of NFL quarterbacks, as well as three presidents, they'll tell you Jay let him win. I'm not going to say that's what happened at all. I'll just say. No comment. It is pretty neat, this thing. It is. It's, it is literally like flying a fighter plane in the water. You look like a plane that got shot down. Well, man, thanks. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I, are you Goose? No, you're Goose because you die in this. <laughs> All right, let's race. I think we can have some fun. I think so. It's a race for the ages. Two hydrodynamic heavyweights face off in the ultimate tiebreaker. We're going to the buoy and back with a big jump at the finish line. I'm going to send Jeff back to SeaWorld. Latch, latch. Good. Inflate the seals. It's really kind of tricky to drive this because it's basically the opposite of a car. Start the engine. The throttle is in the hand stick. Right pedal. And I'm steering with my feet. The hand stick also controls the side wings, and the foot pedals also raise or lower the nose. which means there's a whole bunch of things I can screw up when I'm trying to go around this buoy. Uh-oh, I think he's getting it up. Oh, took that one just a little too wide. I think my dolphin is doing this on porpoise. to be throttle shy when you lose it. the race, but maybe I can win over the New Zealand judges with a better jump. That was great. Okay, that was way better than Jeff's. Way better than Jeff's. Way better. That's good. To be fair, I think Rob would have said anything to get out of this thing with me driving. Jeff, thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate it. Really good sport. A lot of fun. And you won. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> well, there you have it. Did Jay let him win? I don't know. Just being the kind of magnanimous guy I am, I didn't want to hurt the ego of the aging ventriloquist, so maybe he did actually win. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.